Hey guys, um, it's five past three in the morning here in the UK. I went to bed at ten thirty after taking my medication. And I just woke up while having a night terror. Literally, my I, I didn't think it was possible to have both a night terror and a panic attack at the same time. trying my best to hold shit together I am and it's way too late or early in the morning to call someone who I would consider part of my support group which if any of you know you will know that's my daughter I sweated so much that I had to have a shower. And I've got two bottles of water here. This one is regular and this one is chilled. Um, we're supposed to alternate them and it's supposed to thermically regulate your body and stuff while you're having sleep issues, uh, that's what I've, I've read, uh, some medical journal somewhere, somewhere in like Helsinki or something, they, they, they found that if the person um, swaps around the water temperature, it makes their bodies more sleepy quicker, kind of thing, so you can get back to bed, because I, I don't want to be up at, you know, ten past three in the morning on a Sunday, you know, I, I want to be asleep, and my sleep monitor on my watch told me I didn't even reach REM sleep, I didn't even reach random eye movement sleep, so a lot of people don't know the different stages of sleep, you've got alpha, beta, gamma, REM, um, not in that order, of course, but REM is the minimum that you need, random eye movement. That's when you're sleeping, your brain is cognitively structuring and refiling everything you did throughout the day into a storage memory kind of thing. It's like a file transfer system. It's the only way I can describe it to you, um, which is why sometimes you wake up and the first thing you don't remember is your dreams, is because your brain has used that computing power, so to say, has used that computing power to move what you've learnt throughout the day, what you did throughout the day, into your long-term storage, which is the back of your, in the back of your head. Short-term memories in the front, long-term memories in the back. Uh, from what I've found out from many a doctor, um, especially concerning my head injuries and my head trauma, which is why um, when you get a concussion, uh, it's your brain hitting the inside of your skull. See, the inside of your skull isn't smooth like it is on the outside. On the inside of your skull, there is what looks like stagnites, which is like spikes. Those are calcium structures that are formed and meant to hold your brain still while it's forming well they don't dissolve they become hard as part of your skull platelets skull plates and um 
when a person gets a concussion, your brain has quite literally embedded itself on to one of those spikes, if you will. Uh, this is why we're not meant to be punched in the face or slammed on our heads, uh, things of that nature, um, which is why props go out to stuntmen, uh, quote-unquote professional wrestlers who are just paid stuntmen, um, and entertainers, of course. Um, because concussion damage is real. Uh, mental health is real. PTSD is real. Panic attacks are real. Everything... I just felt is real. I have a upcoming PTSD and ADHD uh, evaluation on the 20... I want to say it's the 28th. Um, Monday I will call around and find out where I know it's at Royal Berkshire, uh, the local hospital here. Um, so that's going to be fun. Not really. Um, my therapist has been helping me with my survivor's guilt. Uh, that is definitely something I I I have. Um, I'm not even joking, I, I suffer from survivor's guilt, I suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, I suffer from separation anxiety disorder, which is, um, that, that's a weird one, uh, the way it was explained to me, um, it's like Stockholm Syndrome, only it's not... Uh, the Stockholm Syndrome is where a victim uh, ends up falling in love or feels a, a level of compassion for their abuser. Uh, as where separation anxiety is where I need this one specific thing or this one specific person or, or whatnot uh, to function. Um, that's from, from what I've what I've read and this is this is the problem with websites like WebMD and, and NHS 111 because when you start researching different things and falling down rabbit holes again at 3am in the fucking morning I know I had night terrors because I've got what feels like a trapped nerve or a pinched nerve which means I was moved Rapidly moving my head. Uh, I've got a migraine now. It's literally moved right to here. So it, it is a full-blown migraine. So this light in my bloody face isn't helping. Um, but I just wanted to get these thoughts out of my head. And... Um, please understand when I say this. Mental health... Struggles in particular are real. Mental health problems are real. Um, when I was younger, and I found out, you know, oh, this person's got mental health problems, they thought, what the hell's fucking wrong with you, man? You've got everything. You know? you got to understand, the way society works, it's on a bell curve. Okay? You are... You always think you're at the bottom of the bell curve when you're actually not. You're actually further up in that bell curve because there's always someone worse off than you. Okay, something my dad always used to tell me. My dad, my nan, um, so many people used to tell me. Plus, I forgot to eat. <laughs> That's another thing I forgot to eat. And it's too late for me to eat now. If I eat right now, I'll throw up. I was going to do chicken and veggies for dinner, but just got away from me. I'm trying this no sugar thing. Um, as you guys know, I usually have two sugars in my coffee when I'm down to no sugar in my coffee. Uh, not because I don't have enough sugar or anything. It's not that at all. It has to do with the fact that I'm trying to get 
a natural balance back into my body. So why when I drink any form of um, caffeine, uh, whether it be for an energy drink, I make sure that they're sugar free, I make sure that they're um, things of that nature. I, I, I don't want like a hundred bloody million grams of sugar in my system. Um, I know what triggered my PTSD. I know what triggered it. I was in a um, I was in a private Discord call with um, one of my partners, and um, I found some old army photos of me and my unit, and I shared it with this person. <laughs> And all the memories of my friends. And the day they were taken away from me. I can still feel the sand. The heat. I can still smell it. Own this, own this, own this. <sighs> Sorry, guys, I just. If you truly want to thank a veteran, punch a politician. Seriously. Don't punch a Nazi. Don't, 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 don't hit Antifa. Punch a politician. This is the, 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 this is the problem with countries that are supposed to set an example, like England, like America, like France. The bankers and their greed cause the economy to crash and tank, yet do any of them go to prison? Do any of them, are any of them held accountable? Back in the day, during the first Great Depression, tr stock traders would rather jump off a roof than face the wrath of the people and the justice system. They took their own lives. Do you understand that? Do you understand the power that is over someone? And yet now, Goldman Sachs, whoever can tank an entire bank, people can do runs on banks, banks can deny you your money, your money. Start asking you, what are you spending your money on? None of your fucking business, it's my money. Oh, you're a politically exposed person now, there goes your bank account. Why? Because I didn't fucking tell you what I'm going to spend my money on. If you must know, I'm going to spend it on an eight ball of coke and a couple of hookers. You got a fucking problem with that? No? And fuck off. Cunt. I hate it. I hate it every time some bastard asks me what I'm spending my money on. It's none of your fucking business what I spend my fucking money on. Sorry, this is this is this is the downswing. I apologize. I I apologize. This is the emotional downswing. And when I go for a panic attack, the rage comes out. The rage just starts to manifest. And 
Sometimes I get so angry I just throw up. I mean it. I just, I just vomit. I get so angry. The old me. The character that you used to see. The Cobra Commander character. You used to see on Twitch where I'd be smashing a keyboard. Screaming. Throwing shit around. That was a character. I used, to, I used to think it was a character. It wasn't. That was a that was a me that needed to come out. That me is dead now. I hope, I pray, that that me is dead. But it's not. It's still there. And just, I know how Mike Tyson feels. Mike Tyson said it himself. He said he doesn't want to feel like a bitch. But he doesn't want to become that monster again because when he if if that when not if when that monster does show his face again, hell is coming with him. Mr. Tyson, I know you're never gonna see this video. I know how you feel. Because he has a monster inside of me that I know if I ever let him out truly again. Fuck. <sighs> this is what you don't see. When I'm live streaming on Twitch. When I've made two, three, four, five, six videos of the same video over again. Because halfway through the video I break down or or something upsets me or angers me or pisses me off or I can't find the right paint or paintbrush or whatever and This is an unedited video, so you I don't care who watches this video, but understand this guys. If you wanna know why my content has not been like it used to, is because I'm not the old me. During my last live stream I mentioned that I'm single in real life. And physically I am. There's no one in that bed. There's no one here that can physically touch me. However, I do have partners. Okay, I've got I've got Comfy, I've got Red, I've got Evelyn. Okay, I have partners. But they're overseas, they live in America. And they do what they can to help me. So when I said said I was single, I meant that. In real life I am single. And that, that actually hurt one of my partners when I said that. And I humbly apologize. From the whole of my heart, I apologize. I did not mean to hurt you. I did not mean for my words to hurt you. I was trying to be as clear and concise as I could be. And unfortunately, I wasn't. I wasn't clear. I wasn't concise. And I hurt people. And I'm sorry. I I take full ownership of the fact that I hurt someone that I love deeply and I'm so sorry that I hurt you but I'm not ready for a, re a physical relationship with anyone I'm not in a place mentally I'm not in a place physically I'm not in a place spiritually I'm not in a place financially and I know I'm not saying that women are only after your bag, all right? I'm not saying that. But you're telling me it wouldn't be nice if I just surprised you with a trip somewhere. Like pack a pack a pack a weekend bag, we're going to Miami. Or we're going to Florida, or we're going to um, uh, we're going to Hawaii, or we're going to a fucking ski lodge, or you know what I mean? Just random. You know, you've had a sh you've had a shitty week. Pack a fucking bag. We're getting a flight. We're catching a red eye. You know, 
Next thing you know, we're in fucking, I don't know. You know, somewhere nice, you know, or the car's broke, okay, take us to the shop, I'll pay for it, you know, I don't have time to fix it myself, you know, need a rental car, okay, here you go, I don't have that kind of money, I've got 20, 20 something pounds to my name, 20 bucks to my name. That's all I got. And I'm tired of it. I had money. Some fucker stole it out of my crypto wallet. But I had money. I had 42,683 pounds stolen from my crypto wallet. From a man in the middle attack. That's why I started my cyber security course. Because I know the pain of that loss. Financially. And it just. It felt violating. You know. I had plans for that money. I was going to buy me a house. I was going to buy me. A nice little used car and a house. Nothing special. Little little two bedroom place. Up up just up outside of Newcastle. Beautiful house. Perfect for me. Perfect for someone who just wants to be left alone and and stream and and struggle <laughs> instead I got my entire I didn't just get my legs kicked out from under me I got my whole body cut off at the neck I'm like Wolverine I have to regrow an entire new body just from my head And I do not have the financial options that I had. See, when I first got back here, I worked for a year straight, 80 hour plus work weeks. I don't have that in me anymore. I'm, I'm 44, I'm 43, 44 years old, almost 40. Yeah, come, yeah. Physically, I've got some health issues. My hips, my lower back, my right tendons in my hand aren't fixed either. Um, damage at the factory that happened to me. Um, and I just don't have it in me mentally. It took a lot out of me to do that. I sacrifice a lot. Get up at six in the evening. Go to a shitty deli factory. And not come up. Not clock out till six in the morning. And then sometimes I'd even stay till eight. And do some overtime. And that's not including the two and a half mile walk I had to do daily from where I was living to the pickup point to get the, the coach to the factory and then back again. Drop off point is the same point as the pickup point, which means I had to walk another two and a half miles back home. I used to walk five miles just to and from work daily, not including the amount of miles I walked doing work at the deli factory and people kept wondering why I lost all that weight like that I lo I dangerously lost a lot of weight 
I didn't even have money to buy food. The first... Let's see... Two weeks, three weeks of me working at that daddy factory. My lunch breaks, all I had was water. That's it. No food, just water. Cups and cups of water to bloat my stomach to thinking I had food. And of course then the reverse happens. I have to piss like a racehorse. You know? This is why a lot of diets tell you, Hydrate! Basically what they're just saying is fool your stomach into thinking it's full. And there's two ways of doing that. Water or wear a belt. Or do both, which is what I did. And then I would get home. And there'd be a pile of dishes from the dinner that the people who I was living with had cooked that night before. No, no, no dinner for me. No plate in the, f no, no plate in the oven or, or in the microwave or a little post-it note. No, no, none of that shit. No. Nope. So I had to clean up all of their plates, their pots, their pans, their knives, their forks, their cups, everything, while they're just getting up. And then it's like, make me a cup of tea. What am I, your fucking slave? can't say anything because if I do I'm out on the streets so I have to take it on the fucking chin got to the point where the family member that did take me in ended up taking the absolute fucking Piss. Let's 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 just be honest here. They took the absolute ever loving piss. And I wanted to buy that house just so I could rub it in her face. And get a little bit of revenge. Just a little bit, not much, just a little bit. But I was denied even that. I'm going to try and get some sleep, guys. Thanks for letting me rant. <laughs>